Well, welcome to the Word According to Me. It's your boy, AJ Tripp. It's been a long time since I did a video blog. But I'm doing one now just to catch up on a couple things. First of all, tomorrow is July 16th. It's the update for the Matt Forte um, contract situation going on with the Bears. Here's my thought. Matt Forte should get paid, but maybe not by the Bears. Here's what I'm talking about. Uh, this is a passing league, guys. For those who like football, pro or in college, in both places, it's a passing league. And what needs to happen is the Bears need to be a passing team in order to win. Now, Jay Cutler has got his guys. He's got Marshall, Earl Bennett. Seems he got some quote-unquote weapons. So, we'll see what goes on. But Jay Cutler is that quarterback to take to the next level. So, I don't think we really need a, uh, a guy like Matt Forte. Matt Forte is a type of back in my opinion, who runs the ball 25 to 30 times. Um, that's what probably what he does best. And also, I think Matt Forte is kind of a shifty back. He'll make you miss. I like running backs that will outrun you. Like Darren McFadden, Chris Johnson, Adrian Peterson. I don't think Matt Forte is going to outrun you. But I think He'll make you miss on his way to the end zone. As you see in that, always you see in that clip in that from Tampa Bay over in New England from last year. Um. So if uh, if March Forte is a bear, you know, it's okay. But you know, I I think what I do is it, you know, see Matt Forte, where, where however he does it, whether it's you know. Whether it's a you know long-term contract or it's uh, the franchise tag, just play this year, and then we can move on from Matt Forte. Uh, let me go to a team who wants to run the ball. We need to pass the ball in order to get a championship. So that's just the way I see the whole Matt Forte thing. Um, Dwight Howard, I gotta be honest with you. I kind of wanted him to go to the Nets. I kind of did. It would have been kind of nice to see him go to the Nets. But now I just want it over with. Orlando doesn't have to trade him to the Nets. They can trade him anywhere he wants to. It looks like they're going to trade him to the Houston Rockets. Um, the thing is, he said that he's not going to sign in a situation anywhere but Brooklyn. So, who knows, maybe, and because Brooklyn signed a contract with Brooke Lopez, he can't be traded until January 15th. So I think even if, you know, one would say, well, when do you want to just play the first couple of months, you know, in Orlando? But he's he's really done down there. The fans don't like him. Uh, the management probably doesn't like him. Nobody likes him down there in Orlando. So I think he's got to be trading. And if I was, if I were the Rockets, I you know, and I would tra and I would do the trade if I was the Rockets. And then see where I was in January come January 15th. And then, January, and then, you know, if I'm nowhere near where I need to be, then you, you, you can go back to the Nets. And give, and give them that, get Brooke Lopez, get uh, Chris Humphreys and Marshawn Brooks and a whole lot of other people. You'll still be a good team. So I, I think, you know, if I was the Rock, if I, it looks like you're going to go to the Rockets, I, um, I just want them to be over with. This one to be over with. I don't, I don't actually don't want him in Chicago. My guy's Joe Kim Noah. Big shout out to Joe Kim. So, we'll see how that goes. One last thought. With everything that seems to be happening um, out there in sports, um, I, you know, Football and and football and, uh, and and baseball's going on. Although, you know, since the Cubs aren't really too well, you know, today's my first day. I think entire this year. No, maybe my second or third. But 
this is, you know, one of the first days I've watched, you know, a, a, a baseball game from start to almost about finish. So, uh, that's how I am with just baseball, just Cubs things and everything like that. But, uh, obviously the Penn State scandal is probably the biggest thing in sports this year, last year, probably in this, um, in this new millennium. Listen, I'm, 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 I'm not going to say a lot because... You know, I think people are passionate on both sides. The only thing I'll say is this. Uh, I disagree with people who think that Joe Paterno was a bad person. Because he seemingly allowed what went on to went on. That doesn't make him a bad person. At least in my eyes it doesn't. It doesn't take back from what all the good stuff he does. You know, and he did for Penn State. Uh, I think... We can go back, uh, I think on Friday on ESPN Radio, Buster Only, he made a great point. And when he's talking about trying to compare the two, he was talking about the steroid issues. And he's talking about that he thinks the, the, the guys who have admitted or who were tested positive for steroids, if they're Hall of Famers, you know, they should go into the Hall of Fame, but it should be on their plaque. You know, for all the good they did, you know, it needs to be that bad. And I think that's the way you got to look at Joe Paterno. He had 61 years of unbelievable coaching. And, um, you know, all the good he did for Penn State and, that, and, uh, and all that, you know, in, in the whole Pennsylvania. But you also have to acknowledge the fact that he seemingly, you know, you know put the football franchise ahead of um, the uh, ahead of some kids and unfortunately that's the way it gets goes um, um, that's it for right now uh, I, I'll talk to you later peace out